Welcome to the Weekly Extra Point Live. I'm your host, Mo Khan, for this very special edition for the Road Show. We are now here in Brossard, Quebec, for the D4 Finals. What started out with 40 teams in early January has now dwindled to two teams vying for the D4 title, which we played here in Brossard, Quebec, behind us in about one hour's time. With me now is the expert and the uh, Nostradamus, so to speak, here. Well, GM Clarethris. We can we can use the expert term loosely. I, I'm, I'm I'd prefer to be the correspondent because I often get things wrong, as many people will point out. Very well then. Uh, first off, let's uh, congratulate Brocasian for them making it over here. Mongoose for them making it over here. However, both teams did not play each other during the regular season, so this is a game of two foes who are unfamiliar with each other. Brocasian, on the other hand, though, had some very very tough games. They defeated the Gators. The Incredibles, and also the Outlaws in very close games. And Mongoose beat Discount, Double Check, Hard Knocks, Le Zoo, and the Commission. Now, GM, we're here for the final two. The first question that I have for you is the experience factor of Norman Weeks and Nicky McGuire for Brocasian. How big is it, how big is it for, the, uh, uh, for Brocasian to go ahead with these two guys as being the key parts for them? I think absolutely taking their, their experience into account is going to be monumental for them as long as they don't overthink things. If Norman isn't relying on Nicky, if he's not filling the feeding the ball to Nicky every time because he was the tandem and that's what won it for them a couple of years ago with the Warriors, I think that, yeah, it's going to be very, very important. However, he still has to use this experience to lead rather than just having them on the sidelines saying, okay, this is, what we've, this is what we did in the past. Use that experience, know what works and what doesn't, but adjust it to this current situation as well. Cedric Knuckle of Mongoose. What type of player will he be tonight? Will he be that threat or will he be a decoy for the Mongoose team? I think either way, Knuckles is going to be irreplaceable for Mongoose. Because, first of all, being two-way player of the year in Division Four is huge considering how many players you were up against. And this is the man who came out with it up ahead. However, if they use him, if they rely on him, that's going to be perfect. But even if they make it look like they're going to rely on him, he could be bait for the other receivers on Mongoose. What will happen is that um, with the with the Brocasian defense, if they're prioritizing Cedric Knuckle, uh, Alexandre Godet is able to pass the ball around, spread the ball around. However, if they're not prioritizing Knuckle, if they're adding equal importance to them, you know that getting Knuckle the ball, he'll make a play out of it. So I think that either way, Knuckle is going to be huge for this game. All right, let's go on to Phil over for the pregame interviews that we had with Brocasian and Mongoose. I'm here with Kyle Lebovsky of Brocation. Hey, Kyle, how are you? I'm good, good, ready to go. So on Thursday, having missed the semifinal game against Brocation, what are your thoughts of your team's togetherness and how they were able to persevere? Uh, you know what, I'm really proud of the guys. Uh, I think they all know how bad they wanted to be there. Uh, so I'm glad they pulled through. I'm, I'm more than ready to go tonight, and, and, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to play like we did Thursday. So you're a big player on both sides of the ball. You're key on the offense and you're key on the defense as well. Which do you think in this matchup, considering what uh, Mongoose have to offer, which is going to be most important for you? Um, I think both are equally important. I mean, uh, earlier on in the year, obviously, we, uh, we count a lot more on RD. Um, but I mean, it all depends how the game goes. depends on the type of game we're going to have to play and, and whatever uh, we have to do to pull it out today. Okay, so we've got just a few minutes left before the game starts. Is there anything more you'd like to say? Any smack talk? There's, no, there's not going to be anyone else who sees this game film beforehand. No smack talk. Uh, both teams are very deserving to be here, so we're all gonna we're all gonna go out play our hardest, and uh, best team's gonna come out on top. I appreciate that very, very much. Thank you for your time, Thank Kyle. You. Je suis ici avec Cedric Knuckle du Mongoose. Bonjour, Cedric. Bonjour. Okay, donc t'es une des joueurs les plus célèbres dans dans la division. Penses-tu qu'il y a plus d'attente sur ta performance ce soir? Euh, je pense peut-être un, un petit peu. Euh, J'aimerais ça. Comme ça, peut-être qu'ils vont essayer de me couvrir plus. On a une une équipe avec beaucoup de talent partout, que ce soit n'importe quel receveur, tout le monde a du talent. Comme ça, je me fais euh, double cover, je vais voir quelqu'un de libre. Euh, j'espère qu'on est une équipe, puis euh, j'espère qu'on est une équipe. Pour l'attaque à euh, Brocasian, que penses-tu serait l'essentiel pour euh, le contenir? Pour la contenir, je dirais euh, rester d'un culotte des gars, euh, pas laisser beaucoup d'espace, être agressif, pas trop non plus. Euh, puis je veux jouer notre game, on est une équipe qui se tient. C'est pas parce qu'une équipe... Euh, c'est parce une passe qui se fait qu'il faut baisser les bras. Euh, dans le fond, c'est juste euh, rester dans les culottes, justement. Donc, nous sommes, il, a, il reste des minutes avant le commencement. Euh, Est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose que tu aimerais dire, il, euh, comme du smack talk ou quelque chose comme ça? Il n'y a personne qui va le voir avant le match. Euh, non, vraiment, je ne okay. <rire> Non. Okay. Je te remercie. Euh, merci beaucoup.
And thank you very much for the uh, two pregame interviews from the respective teams here, Mongoose and, of course, Brocation. Now, GM, looking ahead here, is it a good thing or bad thing uh, with Brocation, given that they were undefeated during the regular season, and for them to go through what they, what they have accomplished, very close victories where they were playing from behind, especially in the conference title game, is that a good or bad thing? You know what? I think that with a team with this much experience, I don't think it's it's come up in their head at all. Of course, Norman Weeks mentioned in the press conference, he gave the example of the Giants and the Patriots, and they obviously don't want to end up like that. So they don't want to come in expecting anything. They need to earn every yard on that football field, and I think they're ready to do that. So I think that don't worry. This is a this is an entirely new season. The postseason is called the postseason for a reason. It's after the season. So forget about your undefeated season. What matters is this last victory, this above all else. How important is Alex Sarantola for Brocation, given that they're playing a very mobile mongoose team? I mean, Al Alex Sarantola is very, very good at containing pocket passers. He's able to bat down that ball very quickly. I think that with this halfback option that, that mongoose run, they run it with different receivers too. They'll either run their ball, and Alex Godet is also capable of throwing on the run. He's really, really, really going need to need to be careful and contain rather than batting that ball down because if he puts his hands up for a second or even jumps, it's going to be game over because they can take off on a run. Uh, which Mongoose defense will we see this, uh, this very night? Uh, the team that gave up 30-plus points in its first two playoff games or the team that gave up less than 20 points in its last two playoff games? I don't know if it's fair to attribute that Mongoose gave up 30 plus points in their well in, in their first two games because one of those games they did play they played Hard Knocks and when you're playing a team like Hard Knocks it's safe to assume that you're going for a point for point shootout because it's very very difficult to maintain maintain a defense against that team so I think that they went into that game with a different game plan so I don't know if it's necessarily that they allowed those 30 points or they went into it going to score more than the opposition. So I think that they're going to adjust based on what they think is best for the Mongoose attack and, uh, sorry, the Mongoose attack and Brocasian's defense. So I think that one way or the other, they're going to have to formulate a game plan rather than hoping the defense comes up with a stop. Uh, Alex Peels, this is the guy that had a fantastic game on Thursday night. How big of a game will he have tonight? I mean, absolutely. When your rusher comes up with an, uh, an interception as well as timely sacks and bat downs, that's going to be very, very important. Now, Norman Weeks is a very, very smart quarterback, so he's going to have to tr attempt maybe to get into the head of Norman Weeks, maybe make sure that he's contained. But absolutely, your rusher is one of your three most important players with the center, the quarterback, and the rusher. So absolutely, I think a lot of this does rest on Alex Peels' shoulder tonight, especially on the defensive side. And finally, looking ahead over here, Ray Starwar, our very own Ray Starwar, playing in the uh, Division Four final. This will be his sixth finals appearance, however, his first in winter ever in his career. How important is his experience for this very young Mongoose team? I think that above all else, he's going to need to be the motivator rather than everything else. Because, of course, every, every season is a different season and every team is a different team. Since Ray is more a part of this rather than a leader of this, I would say that I don't know about his calling the plays or generally giving his thoughts on what would be best for the attack and the defense because Mongoose have been together so long and they know what works amongst themselves. However, he knows the importance of keeping a team motivated, about showing, how, how, uh, showing when you're pumped, when you're on top, just making sure that they're generally, they don't lose track of where they are and they keep focused. So I think that Sarwar is going to be the focus keeper on this and that should be his, his job above all else. Uh, finally, uh, any X factor that you can think of uh, going into this D4 final? I think that obviously the two pivots are going to be huge for either team, but I think that the X factor is going to come down to who calls the defense because the first defense to slip up is going to lose this game, and consequently the X factor is going to be the first person to pick off the other offense because this is going to be a very, very tightly contested game. All right, it's time for predictions here. Uh, who do you have winning the D4 title in one hour's time? I think it's going to be a lot closer than anticipated, and I think it's going to be a very, very low-scoring game. I'm actually thinking that Brocation are going to win this by three points, but 21 to uh, 18. I think that it's going to be that, that close. Well, we saw it in their conference title matchup, uh, a lot of drop balls in the end zone, a lot of uh, missed opportunities for them. Maybe this time they'll capitalize on those mistakes that they've learned from, from Thursday's game. Well, coming up next is the D4 final, followed by the halftime report. Then in, in one hour's time, we will crown the new D4 winter champion, and we'll have the postgame wrap with GM and I. Stay tuned. Coming up next is the D4 Winter Final for FPI.
And welcome to the Rose Show here, the broadcast of the D4 Finals in Brossard, Quebec. With me, as always, Darren Basmajan here for the Brocation taking on Mongoose. Yeah, Brocation obviously have to be considered favorites. They are undefeated so far in this season. That being said, they have not been without their struggles in this playoff season. We've seen Norman Weeks have, you know, some subpar games. Uh, we've seen the whole team as a whole kind of be a little bit jittery uh, compared to the, the team like Mongoose, who really, they've been to the finals before. And they've put together another excellent season. So I think it's a lot closer than some people might believe. Again, Brocation, a lot of pressure. I mean, they, they've had some tough runs in this playoffs where they were down. And then in most games, they came back and won. And here they are in the finals to hopefully win the D4 title. Captain Steve Hot Hot, uh, captain of the team, very young in age, but also very stout with veteran guys like Norman Weeks and Nicky McGuire. So we will see how this will play out as Brocation will have the opening possession of the D4 Finals here for the winter title for this season, for 2012. And again, Nick, uh, Nicky McGuire, key factor for Brocation's offense. Norman Weeks, uh, the key slinger for this offense as well. Weeks surveys the defense, waiting for the snap of the football. He sees what he likes, I guess. Calls the cadence, rolls up to the snapper, waits, gets it. Looking to his left, pumps. He's going deep to the middle. It is caught. It is a touchdown for Justin Sarantola. 40 yards, an early 6 nothing lead. I have no idea what the Mongoose defense was doing there. He just parted the Red Seas. There was nobody near him. He didn't even have to do like some kind of fancy route. He just basically ran in a straight line, and that was wide open. And the, the Brocation team has had a knack for dropping a lot of football. So this is going to be key. A big catch for them. They're up 6 nothing, going for the extra point here. And you wonder how the veteran savvy leadership of Norman Weeks will be for this football team looking to win their first ever title in FPF uh, D4. Weeks waiting for the snap of the football base offense he has lined up, calling out an adjustment for Alex Sarantola, the brother of Justin Sarantola. Waits for the snap, looking over the middle, looks to his left, waits, going over the middle. It is incomplete and is 6 0 Brocation. Well, we heard Mokan mention Justin Sarantola. And Alex Sarantola, but there's a third Sarantola that is missing in this game, and it's Christian Sarantola. He's been missing all season. He was slated to be the quarterback for this team, got injured before the season started, and that's when they went out and signed a guy like Norman Weeks, and they brought in Nicky Maguire, two guys who had experience in, the, in the championship games. These are guys who have done very well in this league, and they brought a lot of experience, helping them to an undefeated record so far. Mongoose, and here comes Alex Dale with the snap. He gets it. He throws a quick pass to Charbois. It is incomplete. Second down coming up here. Alex Godet has had a fantastic season so far for Mongoose. This offense can put up points at a premium so they can match this output by Brocasian. They definitely can. And uh, Godet is a guy with maybe not the smoothest delivery, not the prettiest looking ball, but he's definitely gotten the job done throughout the season. He's a guy who's done really good for them, and they believe in him, and they trust him, and he's helped them get this far. Second down here for Mongoose offense, opening drive for them. And it, it rolling out, it is going to be incomplete intended for Landry Legault. Incomplete, Alex Godet 0 for 2. Yeah, that play did not just – had nothing going for it. You could see there were three Brocasian defenders in the area where he wanted to throw it. Smart move by him, throwing it out of bounds. Obviously, you don't want to get an interception this early, especially with Brocasian having seized the momentum with that deep touchdown strike down the middle early on in the first drive. And Brocasian in the last couple of weeks have been ball hawk central – Getting key INTs throughout their playoff run. Third down coming up here for Mongoose. Godet gets snapped, looking to his left. He throws it. It is caught by Chris Rive for a first down 11 yard gain. Yeah, nice uh, nice play here. Chris Rive is a guy who has done a l quite a bit for this team. In fact, throughout the season, this is a guy who will always find the end zone. He has a knack for it. Some people do. He's one of them. Only kept out of the end zone twice in the entire season, including the playoffs. So that's something you might be able to expect so far coming up in this game. One for one so far in third down conversions for the Mongoose offense. As Godet waits for the staff of football, he gets it looking over the middle. He is going to Ray Hand Starwar, and that will be a four-yard gain. And Ray Starwar playing in his sixth FPF Finals, first ever in winter, though. Yeah, uh, uh, we've heard Ray Sarwar talking about how he finally wants to win that winter one. He's won enough championships, but he wants a winner one, too. We'll see if that comes true for him. Second down, second in long here. And a little shovel pass by Godet to Chris Rive, and that will be a seven, eight-yard gain, and that could be enough for a first down. Yes, it is. Well, you see Steve Hothod kind of playing a bit too far off him. I, I guess he didn't expect that play coming, but it's a nice little play to run. Obviously, you can't run that in the end zone maybe, but it's, it's a good spot there. There was enough off coverage, and there was a little space for the receiver to get that ball and get some yards after the catch. And they are inside the red zone, so it is first and goal for this Mongoose offense that, can, that could score points when they want to. 
And you wonder if they have that in them tonight. Good, I guess, snap of the football. Staying in the middle of the pocket, rolling to his right, throws it. It is incomplete, intended for Ray Starwar, incomplete. Something didn't go right in that play because you could see a couple of receivers kind of almost ran into each other, including Ray Starwar, kind of gets near the front of the end zone, but a good pass defense by Provo uh, knocking that ball away. Really, they were lucky it wasn't intercepted, Mo. And you know what? This is a ball hockey team, as we mentioned before. Steve Hod Hod, Jimmy, o Jamie Ojea. Well, he's the top ball hockey. Yes, Hod Hod not really known for his ball hockey skills, but Ojeaha has really been a beast for them. Uh, second and goal coming up here. Godet gets snapped. He gives it to he gives it to Cedric Knuckle here, who makes a spin, and he will be the flag just at the lip of the goal line. Nice spin move there by uh, by uh, Cedric, Cedric Knuckle, Knuckle yeah. who's been a top, top, top player. He was their top receiver, leading them in all categories, yards, touchdowns, receptions, and he's been a consistent guy as well. Another one of those guys who is very hard to keep out of the end zone. You saw there, once he gets that momentum going, he's going to find that end zone. And we wonder if Mongoose can punch it in and make this a 6-6 six -six tie. Brocasio on their first drive, first play, scoring a, a long bomb touchdown to Justin Sarantola, 40-yard touchdown. And here we are, a long drive for the Mongoose offense. You wonder if the Brocasio defense is getting tired. Godet gets snapped, getting rushed by Steve Hotta, rolling out to his right. It is incomplete, intended for Chris Rive. Incomplete. Off Rive's hands and almost intercepted by a Brocasio defender by Provo, who was in the area. Uh, you know, risky. When you're rolling like that and throwing across your body, it's it's not the best thing to do when you're this close to the end zone. They are one yard shy, and we have historically seen a lot of teams struggle when they're this close. All right, Darren, the big play, fourth and goal inside the red zone. Can they convert? We'll find out on this next drive play right here. Godet gets it, looking to his right. He throws it. It is caught. Touchdown. Let go. One yard touchdown, 6-6. Six, six. Landry Legault has been a very solid contributor for Mongoose in these playoffs. He only played six games in the regular season. Didn't have incredible numbers, but since they got to the playoffs, he's really been stepping it up for them and starting to become a go-to guy for Alex Godet and a nice touchdown play with him coming down with that ball in a little bit of traffic. Nine play drive, one of the longest drives I've seen so far in D4 this season. Very time-consuming. Really a tale of two teams here. Brocasian, right off the bat, quick strike, one play, one touchdown. Whereas Mongoose methodically really brought it down and taking all four downs to get it to punch it into the end zone. All right, extra point attack coming up here for one. Godet gets it. He waits. He's going to go into the left corner. It is caught by Lonzi and Logo. It, it is, yes, it is good, 7-6. What a beautiful toe tapper on the sideline here by Landry Lego. Again, coming up big on the second play in a row. Gets that one-point convert as referee Tony Tibet making the call there. All very famer. decisively, nodding his head. Yeah, All of famer that he is. So uh, good for him. But 7-6 lead for the Mongoose and Brocasian. Now you got to wonder, are they going to keep going with that quick strike mentality or will they slow it down a bit, Mo? And again, with a guy like Norman Weeks at the helm who's had finals experience, you'll see how this plays out. Waiting for the snap of the football. He surveys the defense, makes his adjustments, takes a couple steps back, waiting to get the ball, waits. He looks, gets it, snapping it. He goes to the left side, caught by Nicky McGuire. Six-yard gain that will be well short of a first down. And this will not be the last time we hear Nicky McGuire's game this game. I'm sure of it. He has been a – he was the, their number two receiver after Kyle Lebowski in the regular season. But in the playoffs, he has really taken it up a notch. In the playoffs so far, he has 15 receptions, 126 yards, and seven touchdowns, Mo. Really been a go-to guy for Norman Weeks since they reached the second season. Norman Weeks waiting for the snap of the football. He takes his time to survey the deep ends to see if there's any adjustments he has to do. Waits, looks, he gets a snap of football, looking over the middle. He's going over the middle to Faisan Manoir incomplete over his head. There was He got a little step on him, but obviously Manoir not the fastest player on the team, but you can't sleep on him. He has made some big catches for them. He's gotten some touchdowns for this team, and we've seen it happen. So Norman Weeks trying to kind of push them deep, stretch out the defense a little bit, and then that way he can methodically use guys like Nicky Maguire underneath to gain some yards. And you wonder if they can cast off football consistently speaking here. They've dropped many big plays uh, throughout the playoffs. Third down here, a big play for Brocasian, uh, looking to go up by at least six points, if not more, in their second series in the D4 finals in Brossard, Quebec. Weeks looks, sees what he likes, gets a snap of the football, runs to his left, quick play out, Caught by Nicky Maguire, and that should be enough for a first down. Six-yard gain. Well, like I said earlier, you know Nicky Maguire will be getting a lot of passes. Quick little out there and uh, get a couple yards. The important thing is to keep the drive moving, and that's what they're doing. So I guess after going with that quick strike at the beginning, they're going to go more to a traditional 
uh, type offense, you know, just slowly matriculating the ball downfield. And usually that's what works in FPF anyways. And we'll see if this will work for them this time around as they are now driving with the football their fourth play of this second series uh, as Bro as Mongoose, pardon me, had nine plays in their first drive. Weeks looking at the defense once again, waits for the snap of the football. He gets it looking over the middle, going to his right, over a post. It is incomplete to Jimmy Ojiaha, and that is – Second down coming up. It's funny. That ball kind of looked like – I know there's no wire in Brossard, but it kind of looked like halfway through it hit a wire because it changed trajectory, kind of lost some speed, and it just fell short of Ojeaha. So uh, not not the best pass and not the best attempt at catching. You could see that kind of Ojeaha was surprised at how slow it was getting to him. So they could have had some yards there, but not catastrophic, I guess. Not at all. But, again, you can ill afford to have too many incompletions in the finals for FPF. Weeks sees his adjustments, makes his call at the line of scrimmage, waiting for the snap of the football, gets it, looking to his left, going to his left. A quick post in. It is caught by Kalabowski. That will be enough for a first down. 19 yards on the play. Tackle by Chris Rive. Mr. Reliable, the best receiver by by a considerable amount during the regular season, Kyle Lebowski, and he's been their best player, a, a multiple-time All-Star for this team. Kyle Lebowski is an excellent, excellent player, and again, him and Nicky Maguire are the two names that Norman Weeks will be looking to above all others, especially as we get closer and closer to crunch time. People he's familiar with uh, throughout his time in FPF uh, playing in this league. Uh, first and goal come up here and Brocation looking to punch this one in out punch, punch this one in pardon me to make this a 14-6 lead Weeks surveys the defense once again waiting for the snap of the football he is looking he makes his cadence gets it looking to his left looking has all day throws it it is caught no incomplete intended for Justin Sarantola just outside of the back of the end zone. It's a nice catch by Sarantola, but you can see just a bit too far past the end zone. He was probably str straddling the line all the way through the catch. So nice attempt, but no catch. They've still got a couple downs, though. Uh, yes, indeed, and you wonder if that will come back to haunt them again. Last week in their win, they, they were lucky enough to get into this point of the finals because of drop balls that they had in the end zone. Norman Weeks looking again, seeing what he f is hopefully finds a weakness in that defense. Waits for the stab of the football. Gets looking to his right. His underhand pass to Faison Munoir, and that is going to be a flag because it was an underhand inside the red zone. Yeah, there's no excuse at this point to not know that rule. It's been in place for quite a while. Norman Weeks has played in this league quite a while. It's a nice try, but definitely that is obviously a penalty for throwing the underhand pass in this league. That's what we like to call the Paul Kamel rule that was put in a few years back. Um, but it, it's, it's difficult now because it does push them back, and it's, again, putting yourself in a situation that you don't want to be in. Uh, second down and goal for the Brocasian football team. We're looking to punch this one in, and, again, that penalty could cost them and haunt them in this series here as they're normal weeks waiting for the snap of the football. He looks, sees, gets it, looking to his right, rolling to his right, throwing it to the corner. It is picked off by Lante Legault, intended for Faisal Munoir, and a huge play inside the red zone. I tell you what, Mokan, Landry Legault came here to play this game. Like I said, he didn't have the most impressive statistics during the regular season, but so far he's got a touchdown, an extra point, and now an interception in this game. And this is a guy who Mongoose, I guess, is, can really rely upon. He seems to be a big game player for them. It, it, he's definitely been so far in this football game. And you wonder this second series for Mongoose, if this will be a long drive for them. We'll find out. First play coming up here. Godet throws it. It is incomplete. Intended for Legault, a short pass incomplete yeah a bit low kind of a bit short not the most accurate pass again Godet is a guy that's the one thing he's got to be very careful about he's not the most accurate quarterback in FPF he's had a good season but for example against commission in their last game he only completed or, or earlier in the playoffs he only completed 44.1 percent of his passes and that was his worst game by far this season so he's got to be careful protect that ball Mongo's very deep in their end zone Godet waits for the snap, gets it looking. He is going to go deep. He is throwing it high. It is picked off by Guillaume Del Palma, a huge INT, essentially a punt, more or less, from that point in the field. I almost thought that that pass was for Guillaume Del Palma. I almost forgot who was throwing the ball because it really looked like he was in good position to come streak down that sideline and catch it. Only when he turned around did I realize he was not on their team. Uh, nice play by him. De Palma, obviously, an incredible athlete. Maybe, like you said, not the best hands in the league, but on defense, he is a guy who can who is really a game changer for this Brocation team. Uh, the pass was intended for Chris Rive, well overthrowing his head, picked off by Guillaume De Palma. Now Brocation deep in their end zone. Norman Weeks in his part of the football field, looking to get that ball out of the end zone, and for some yards gained, waits for the snap of the football from Munoir. 
looking, surveys the defense. He sees what he likes now, waiting for the snap. He gets it, looking quickly, going to his left side. He throws a quick pass out. It is caught by Kyle Lebowski's seven-yard gain. Talk about LaPointe. One thing I really like about Lebowski is, Lebowski is you see, when he gets that catch right away, Puts, puts his shoulders down, gets ready, makes that cut, and starts trying to gain yards. A lot of times you see people trying to juke and jive. This guy is just ready to turn and run upfield right away. Gets a couple yards, but a couple yards here, a couple yards there. Sooner or later, it's adding up. And again, you wonder if they'll go to that short game quite often. It uh, definitely did not work their last series, so you wonder how the psyche is of this Brocasian offense in their third series in the first half of this D4 Finals. Weeks surveys the defense, gets a snap of the football, looking to his left. He's going over the middle. He's throwing it. It's picked up by Lante Lago once again. A huge play, and he brings it back to the midfield of the football. Is anybody else on this team? I feel like we're just talking about Landry Lego all game. Another big play. He gets the break in front of that ball. Again, kind of underthrown. Not the, the prettiest pass Norman Weeks has ever thrown. Landry Lego now putting together an incredible stat line for this game. Uh, one touchdown, one extra point, two INTs. Really, really good job by him. A uh, great job by him so far. And, he, and you wonder if Norm Norman Weeks is going to try to avoid throwing it in anywhere near Lego's area because he has been all over the football making big play after big play for the Mongoose football team. And speaking of the Mongoose, they're back on offense, looking to go up. Go that throws it over the middle, caught by Ray Starwire up the sidelines, and that'll be enough for a first down, 12 yards on the play, first down. Nice play by Starwire, turning that corner and running upfield. I Using his hands. Yeah, all right, Rayhan. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we, we, we try to be unbiased. I Obviously, we have friends on both teams, Steve Hotot on one team and Rayhan on the other, but you got to root for the big Star Wars. You might have friends on both teams. Yeah. I'm, I'm a broadcast journalist. I'm a man of the people. Uh, you might be the man of the people. But Ray Star is the people's people. I don't even know what that means, Mokan. Let's get back to the game. <laughs> Let's get back to the game here. Mongoose now deep in brocation territory, looking to go up here uh, in a football game that's been tightly contested in the last couple of series on defense. Alexander Godet winning for the snap of the football. Surveys the defense, gets it, looking over the middle. Going to his right. It is caught by Londi Lago again. Nine-yard touchdown, 13-6 Mongoose. Landry Lago, this is incredible, Mokan. I don't think I've ever seen anyone dominate a first half as this guy is doing. Complete domination by Lago, who's had a fantastic game on both sides of the football here. And they take a 13-6 lead very late in the first half as they go for one-point attempt here to potentially make this a 14-6 lead and going into halftime with a lot of momentum. So, I mean, this is going to be very important uh, for Mongoose to get this extra point. Godet West waits for the snap, gets it looking, going over the middle, looking to his right, avoids the rush. He is going to go. It is nowhere to be found, out of bounds, 13-6 Mongoose. And so still 13-6, seven-point lead for them, but you got to – I mean, Mo, I, I don't know about you, but after the first play, I kind of didn't think this is the way the game would be going. Since then, Brocasian has looked out of sync. They've made uncharacteristic mistakes. This is an undefeated team, and they're playing a little bit sloppy and a little bit nervous, I think, so far. Uh, and very uncharacteristic, as you pointed out. You wonder – why the experience of Norman Weeks and, of course, Nicky McGuire has not come into play to calm down this very young football team. But so far, they've not they've looked lethargic like they did on Thursday's semifinal victory. So we'll see how this series goes for them, hoping to score some points before halftime arrives. Norman Weeks, looking at the defense once again, likes to make some audibles uh, as he does some adjustments to see what is out there. Waits for the snap. Gets it. Looking to his right now. He's going to go in a post. It is intended for Jimmy Ojeha and is incomplete. Well, this is the second time they've tried to play like that, and both times good coverage by the defender. Uh, the first time it was not a great pass, and this time it was a good pass, but just a little bit behind enough that he that Cedric Knuckle was able to get his fingertips on that ball and knock it away. Great coverage by this uh, Mongoose secondary who's played very well up till now. Second down here for the Brocasian offense. Weeks waits for the snap, gets looking to his left, takes two steps, caught by Nicky McGuire, and that'll be a six-yard gain. Third down coming up for the Brocasian offense. Got to be careful if you're the Mongoose defense here. You don't want to give that many easy options to a quarterback who is as patient as Norman Weeks. A lot of quarterbacks, you'll see that they keep going for the deep strike, but he will take it if you give it to him. Third down now, third and short for Brocasian. Weeks surveys the defense again, waits for the snap of the football, gets it, looking to his left. Quick straight out to Kyle Lebowski. First down and more. Great move, and that'll be, well, more than enough for a first down. 13 yards on the play. Nice move, but what a tackle. Diving, going across his body. A big, big tackle by Chris Rive there. Uh, really impressed uh, by his 
short game tackling ability. But again, lo you can't give that much cushion on these receivers. Norman Weeks will make you pay for it. You got to be a little bit more aggressive. And Lebowski has been big on second and third down situations for the Brocasian offense. Norman Weeks making an audible at the line of scrimmage with Nicky McGuire and, and the rest of the receivers. Waits for the snap of the football. Gets looking to his left. Going to his left. It is caught by Nick McGuire. That will be enough for a first down or will just be short. My apologies. Seven yards. Second down coming up. Well, this is this is textbook here. Nicky McGuire coming in from that slot position, going towards the sideline. Lebowski crossing over to the other side. Little subtle pick there, and you've got yourself an opening. And this will now be second down coming up here. And they could have – sorry, second and goal. My apologies. As Norman Weeks waits for the snap of the football, gets it looking to the right, going over to the middle. It is caught by Justin Sarantola. Four yard touchdown grab, 13 12, Mongoose. Nice move by Sarantola here. If you, I guess you won't see it on the screen, but if you saw before, just a little, little juke and kind of gets the defender to go one way, cuts back towards the inside, catches it in the back of the end zone. Nice play for them. Well, the extra point attempt will be coming up, and they could potentially tie this up here. Uh, and this could give them momentum because as we approach halftime, you wonder who can have the momentum going into the second half of this football game here. And so far, it's been well played by Mongoose. Landry Legault has been fantastic on both sides of the football. It's been the Landry Legault show, and it's time to see if the other guys are going to start stepping up too. All right, extra point attempt coming up here for Brocasian. Waiting for the snap of the football as Norman Weeks gets it looking. He is going to fake the handoff. No, he's going to give it to Alex Sarantola. Going to throw it back to Norman Weeks. Waiting, waiting. He's going to throw it into the end zone. It is... Through the hands of Justin Sarantola, and you wonder if that will come back to haunt them on that miss attempt. Well, it's funny. Sarantola actually had a pretty good shot at that one. It just went through his hands, as you'll see here on this replay. Ball, Norman Weeks throws it up, and Sarantola, he really had a chance. It was Both defenders were converging on him, but he had a chance. If he had just gone a little bit higher, he would have come down with that. We'd have a tie game. As it is, though, Mongoose up one. 13-12 for Mongoose right now, who, who've had some good sustaining time-sustaining drives up till now. And again, with, with Cedric Knuckle, with Landry playing very well, we'll see how this comes out in the second half if there'll be some uh, adjustments made by the Brocation defense so far. So, again, they're now at their own uh, third possession, pardon me, at their own 10 yard line here, trying to work themselves ahead. And Brocation's defense has played pretty well, but they can get themselves some hope here if they can make a play or two. Out trips left now for Godet. Now, quads left. First time we've seen this so far, Darren. Waiting for the stab of the football is Alexander Godet. Waits, looking, rolling out to his right. Throws it across by oh It's picked my. up by Steve Hodhod. Interception by Steve Hodhod. And that could be a bone-crushing play that could end any hope whatsoever. Well, the original Birdman, Stephen Hodhod, uh, coming in here with that big pick. But I do not know what Alex Godet was looking at there. That was, you're rolling out one way, throw a crossbody over the middle. It is the worst possible decision you can make, especially that close to your own goal line. A huge, huge mistake by Alex Godet, a guy who really needs to be careful protecting the ball. This is a guy who's thrown an interception in the last eight games. Cons not good. That is not a good consecutive game streak. So we'll see if Brocation is able to turn that into points now. And momentum, as we said before, could be key going into the second half of this football game. Here, normal weeks, surveying what he sees, waiting for the snap of the football. Makes his cadence, gets the snap, looking, short snap, looking to his left, going over to this post. It is caught by Kalabowski, and that is enough for a touchdown, 18-13, 12-yard gain for Lebowski. Turns up the Jets just at the last second to be able to cross that plane and get into the end zone, as you'll see right here. Just enough of his hip got past the, the goal line so that they could call that a touchdown. Nice play, but again, no surprise here. Lebowski, one of their top players. And now they're going for the ever-important extra point attempt. They are going for one here, and if they could be up by six at halftime, uh, remember, Mongoose will have the football starting in the second half. So if there's any chance whatsoever they stop them on the next series before halftime, that can definitely help themselves moving ahead. Really, uh, that, that mistake by Godet is was unconscionable at this point in the game. We're going to have to see if he's going to elevate his game or if it's going to be too much pressure for him. And normal Weeks looking at what he sees. He always tries to find that weak spot on that defense, and he finds it most of the time. Gets the snap, looking to his left, waiting, waiting no all day. Nobody's rushing. All day rushing the quarterback. He throws it. It is complete to Nicky McGuire, 19-13. No rusher, Darren. I, I hope that was not a strategy. I hope that was just a mix-up or a mistake because how can you not rush? I understand that rushing a quarterback like Norman Weeks, who will get the ball off and rarely takes sacks, 
this might not be the the easiest thing to do, but still, you got to send someone. Make his job a little harder. Without question, you have to send some sort of pressure. Otherwise, as you saw, they will have all day to just pick and find their guy that they want to throw the football to. All right, 1913 Brocasian. They had the momentum now. Can Mongoose come back and reply with the score before halftime? As we see with Alexander Godet, and now he does waiting for the snap, gets it looking. Going over the middle, it is caught. Yes, caught by Charlebois. Uh, 32 yard gain, first down. Charlebois is a guy who's, who was a big, consistent performer for this team uh, throughout the regular season. Had a touchdown in eight straight games, but in the last two games of the playoffs, he's been struggling a little bit. Hasn't put up the great numbers that we're used to seeing from him, so it's good to see him get back into his groove as now the Mongoose is one yard shy of the end zone. And they're going very quick here. No huddle at, at the last line of scrimmage here for Godet in this offense, and it looks like he will call a timeout. Yes, I think there was a timeout called by the Brocasian. Uh, last play of the half before uh, we go to halftime here. Yeah, exactly. So we've got the last play now, and it was a big play for them to get that close to the end zone. It's a lot of pressure on Mongoose. We saw before when it was fourth and goal on the one-yard line, they pulled it out and had a great catch down that right sideline. So we'll see right now if they're able to do it again and show how clutch they can be. Uh, again, this is key for Mongoose to go into halftime, hopefully tied, and have the ball to start off the second half so they could be up by 12 points in the next 10 minutes of this football game here. Waiting for the snap is Alexander Godet. Looking, gets it. Stay in the middle. Looking, rolling out to his left. He throws it. It is caught. Oh, touchdown. Touchdown by Chris Rivet. That was almost picked off by Sarantola. Boy, oh, boy. That could have been a momentum killer. Oh, boy. Alex Sarantola, you cannot allow yourself not to at least knock this ball away. I thought he could have picked it off and gone all the way. As you see, Chris Rive, very excited by that touchdown catch. I'm sure even he thought that that was going to be a pick six. Goes through Sarantola's hand. Chris Rive, touchdown, tie game with the possibility of a lead right now, Mo. And that is a big, big play. Game of inches, as they always say in football. And that could be a big factor going into the second half of this football game, as, as you said before, 1919. One, th one thing that I did notice, though, uh, Jamie Ojeaha, showing his veteran presence right after that play, puts his arm around Sarantola, tells him it's okay, you'll get it done for us later, don't worry about it. So I like to see that on a player. Last play coming up here for Mongoose to hopefully go up. Godet gets the snap looking. Going over the middle, it is high, it is out of bounds. 19-19 halftime score, Darren. This is shaping up to be a really good second half. Yeah, I don't think we've seen the best from either of these teams. Not Brocasian and not Mongoose. So now we'll see. This is the last 24 minutes of their season. Let's see if they'll get it done. Thank you, guys. I'm here at the halftime report. It is currently 19 all, 1919. We've seen a fairly, uh, fairly eventful game. We've got two interceptions on each side. Both defenses are playing up to the competition, and right now it's close to anybody's game. So let's come back to the game film now, and let's start the second half. Second half here, Mongoose with the football to open up the drive. Godet throws a quick pass out to Chris Rive. It is caught, and it'll be seven-yard gain. Short of first down, though. Really nice catch by Rive there, coming back across his body and then still getting some momentum and gaining some extra yards. Nice play by him. He's really been a good player for them this game. Yes, he has been second down and three yards on the opening drive of the second half. 19-19 between the two teams here as Godet makes a little audible, trips to his right side, gets the football, hands it off. No, quick pass out to Cedric Knuckle. Eight yards and more. Yes, it will be more in... That will be enough for a first down. Knuckle uh, using that the Rashti Ben Abdelkader spin, not once, not twice, but thrice, and finally gets tackled. Nice play by Knuckle. It's the second time we've seen him coming out of the backfield. Uh, he's a guy that once he builds that head of steam, he will not be denied. Uh, absolutely, and he's a guy that might be the X factor in this second half of this football game as Brocasian looking to stop Mongoose's offense in the opening drive of the second half. As Godet waits for the snap of the football, gets it. Looking to his middle, going to his right. Throws a quick out. It is caught by Cedric Knuckle. Nine yards, just shy of the first down. Well, he's a name that I really thought we were going to have to hear more if Mongoose expected to be successful in this game. He w led the receivers in all categories, touchdowns, yards, and uh, receptions. And he was their leading defender as well, and we barely heard from him in the first half. Second down and one here for Mongoose on the opening drive. Godet gets it looking, waiting, patiently buying time, rolls out to his right. It is incomplete, intended for Knuckle once again. 
Out of bounds, though. That was going to be a hard catch for Knuckle. Uh, just a little bit inaccurate, a little bit on the sideline. Maybe could have come down with the grab, but still not the easiest play to make Mokon. Very hard to do, especially when you have a, a defender hovering right over your back on that play. A third and short here, and you wonder if they're going to try to go for the first down to prolong this drive. Remember, their opening drive was nine plays, which resulted in a touchdown. So you wonder how this will play out on a third and short. Godet waits, gets it. Rowan throws. No, he avoids the rush. Going to his right. It is caught for the touchdown. Cedric Knuckle, four-yard gain. 25-19 Mongoose. Well, clearly at halftime, one of the big adjustments Mongoose thought they had to do is get Cedric Knuckle more involved in this game. You saw in the first half, he was barely targeted. In this second half now, we've only heard his name. So, nice play. He was wide open in the back of the end zone and good elusiveness and escapability by Godet to get him there. Like the fresh Prince of Ballard episode, pass the ball to Will. Let Cedric Knuckle take over. And that's what he's done so far in this second half with the run, the pass, catching the football, the whole nine yards. As they now go for a one-point uh, convert here to go up 26-19 here if they do convert. As Godet waits for the snap, gets it looking. Going to his right into the corner. It is caught out of bounds. Intended again for Cedric Knuckle out of bounds. Uh, Laundry Legault. Uh, Laundry Legault, Laundry my Legault apologies. in the back of the end zone there. And that's somewhere where he did make that big catch earlier. But better coverage this time by, I believe, Justin Sarantola and Theo Ojeaha. Who are both uh, who are both there? So it's a night. Uh, did I say Theo? I meant Jamie. Jamie, yes. Jamie Oja. Sorry, I was thinking about his other brother who plays with uh, Briscoe High Hawks. That's in correct. The divisions. But uh, still, a good momentum, a good way to start for Mongoose. All right, here is the Brocations' first drive of the second half, down by six, waiting for the snap of football as normal weeks, making his adjustments on his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> he waits for the snap of the football, looking gets it. Rolling to his right, waiting. He pumps. He is sacked. Yes, he is sacked by Wade Shalcross with a huge six-yard loss and a big, big play. Wade Jr. Shalcross as Norman kind of put a little bit too much emphasis on that pump fake. Something did not work. You can see him kind of staring down his receivers. Something, something did not happen as he wanted on that, and he's got to take control now because – one thing that we have to mention about Norman Weeks is if we look back at that Gators game, their first game in the playoffs, he had a good first half and an awful second half. Yes. And the only touchdown that, that offense scored was on the last play, which allowed them to win that game and avoid the upset, although narrowly. But Norman Weeks has to step up so his team can have confidence in him and so that he can erase those doubts. Second and long here for Brocation. Very unfamiliar territory for them in the second half. Weeks waits for the snap of the football, makes his adjustments. At the line of scrimmage, calls up the rusher, waits, looking, gets a snap, looking to his left, waits patiently, throws it out. It is incomplete, and that will be third and long on that play uh, intended for Nicky McGuire. Things not starting well, but you can see Mongoose now a little bit a little bit closer on – oh, and we see the flag go on. So what I was saying is they're playing a little bit tighter, which is good for them. I'm not. I think the flag. Well, what do you see here from Mokan as the it flag? It looks here? like the referee is implying that Nicky Morgan. No, he did not have his flag belt, and that is a careless penalty, unforced error by Brocasian on that play. You got to be careful with those. Like I said, there's something about this Brocasian team. They have struggled in second halves in this playoff run, and even if you look at Norman Weeks, if you look at his numbers in the playoffs as a whole, he's throwing one touchdown less per game, and he's throwing one interception more per game, and all his other numbers have gone down as well. So. This is something where he's got to take charge now. He's got to make a big play. They are so far back. Got to be careful to avoid a safety, too. Second and very deep in their end zone, practically. Norman Weeks making his adjustment at the line of scrimmage, waiting for the staff of the football. A little short distance here now. Waits for it, gets it, looking to his left. Patiently throws it up. It is caught by Kyle Lebowski, 13 yards, well short of the first down, though. Well short, but at least it gives them a little bit of breathing room, but... Still, he throws it lower. Only Lebowski get it. That was either an incomplete or a reception for Lebowski. At least it gets them out of the end zone. And to the surprise of maybe some out there, the Brocation will be going for it on fourth down very early in the second half, even though they're down by six. Uh, do you agree with this play, Darren? Uh, I really don't see it at this point. Uh, it's it's too early to be starting risking plays like that, especially when you know the history of, of, of Norman Weeks and how he's been playing. You really, j I think you just go with the safe play and trust your defense, but uh, they're not listening to me. All right, here we go. Fourth and a bunch here for Brocation, looking to get the first down and keep their drive alive. Weeks gets a high snap, looking to his right. Going over the middle, it is picked off, yes, by Cedric Knuckle. A huge play for Mongoose. 
Well, it was a big play by Cedric Knuckle, but uh, to be quite honest, f considering where he got flagged, they would have been better off just dropping the ball or knocking it down to the ground. You see he gains a little bit after the interception, but it would have been a couple-yard difference. Either way, turnover on downs, and again, like I said, Mo, I don't really understand the decision. Uh, it's good to have confidence in your offense, but I think their defense is pretty good too, and I just uh, I didn't see it on this one. Questionable play calling maybe and, and, and decision to go for it on fourth down, and again, the, the unforced error of not having a flag belt really cost them some yards in their opening drive. And Brocation looking to hammer this one in. Mongoose gets it looking, and it is caught a quick out to Charlebois. Eight yards. Tackled by Steve Hodhod. Steve Hodhod with the, the quick tackle there. And he's a guy who's, who's obviously one of the defensive captains on this team. He's a guy who's brought a little bit of veteran experience, played a lot in FPF. Obviously, I've played with him as well, and I know that he's a good calming influence on them. But it's got to be tough for Brocasian defense to be put in this position right off the bat. Second and short for Mongoose's offense. Go ahead, get the snap. Going quick, right over the middle to Charlebois again. That will be enough for a first down. So Charlebois now, two big receptions in a row. They're using that middle of the field kind of gaining yards, and this is what it's going to be for the, for Alex Godet and the Mongoose offense. Bit by bit, just gain yards. That's what they've shown all the time. They're not a deep ball team per se, but he's when he's smart and when he's protecting the ball and being careful, they're a very difficult offense to stop. Uh, first down coming up here for Mongoose's offense, and they're looking to punch this one in on a turnover. Godet hands it off to uh, Knuckle, he throws a one-hopper intended for Chris Vivet well short of the in intended target. I'm not sure if he did this on purpose or if it was just a bad throw because there was a defender right there. I just don't think it was a very good throw. Cedric Knuckle is a guy who you should get involved in other ways. They do use him every, every now and then out of the backfield with a pass or something like that. You obviously want to have the threat, but I still think they should stick to their bread and butter. Second down now for Mongoose's offense. Go ahead, gets a snap looking. Going cross by right to Ray Starwar again, and he will get a lot of yards and a flag, and that might be flag guarding on Starwar. Oh, well, you know, Rayhan, working for the league does not get you amnesty here. If you're going to if you're gonna flag guard, we'll see if he does it there. Ooh, I'm, that, that's... I'm not sure about that one, but he, and he looks a bit surprised too. I guess the referee's saying the maybe in his, in his running motion yeah. maybe came across and guard, did a little bit of flag guarding, but... Still, again, this is the kind of offense that Mongoose has to run. These little underneath things, uh, guys coming from across the field. A patient, patient offense, and this works well for them. Third down here, a big play for Mongoose's offense and for Brocation's defense to make something out of nothing here as Santola will rush Godet looking. Going to the left side, it is caught, yes, caught by Chris Rive. Uh, that'll be well short, though, over first down or any. Or the end zone, my apologies. I'm not sure if the rusher, Sarantola, kind of got his hand on it a bit. It might have been tipped a little, changed a little bit of trajectory, but I think uh, some somebody got a hand in on that because it was a little bit odd. Nice catch, though. Way, good concentration for a guy like Chris Rivera to come, up, come down with it. Fourth and goal now. A big play. Can they punch it in for six points? We'll find out. Godet gets a snap. Looking, waiting, going to the right side. It is incomplete, out of bounds, turnover on downs. And this is what I was talking about earlier. I don't understand why Brocation took that risk. Their defense is competent. They are not. It's not like they're a very weak defense. They had the opportunity to just punt it. They got lucky this time that their defense held firm, and we'll see what Norman Weeks and his offense can do in the second half. Obviously, the first drive in the second half, one to forget. Uh, okay, here we go. First down now, and they're very deep inside their own territory, in their end zone practically. Norman Weeks has to look behind him to make sure he's not out of bounds for a potential safety, and he waits for the snap of the football, looks, gets it. Waiting, going to his left side pumps, he goes to Kyle Lebowski, incomplete through his hands. Risky throw there, Mokan, as the defender who had coverage on him was right there, and you could see him almost swooping in for that interception, and guess who it was? Landry Ooh. Legault, yet again. Uh, really, that was a risky play, and I don't like it that close to the end zone. Second, and we can see it's very long because he's very deep in his end zone, so this is a big play for, Mo for Bro Mongoose to stop him in for Brogation to convert. Waiting for the snap, Norman Weeks looks, makes his adjustments, Gets a snap of the football, a little high, looking to his left, going over the middle. He has Nick Morgard over his head, just through his fingertips, incomplete. Just missed him, like you said, just overthrew it. And he's kind of lucky that he kind of didn't throw it, underthrow it, because there were two defenders converging on that play. They got beat early on with the inside receiver going deep down the, deep down the middle of the field. They weren't going to get beat again. Two defenders smartly recognizing the play. Although it was overthrown, I feel like if it had been on target, there was even more chance for disaster. And once again, they're still deep in their end zone. Brocage's offense, they have to get that football out of the end zone as soon as possible for any success. Weeks gets it, looking to his right. Quick out to Sarantola upfield, 
And, oh, that it could be, yes, it will be offensive charge on Sarantola on that play. Yeah, well, you see, Sarantola, he kind of he gets the ball and just basically runs into the guy. I'm not not crazy about it because what are you supposed to do, right? I, but you have to be careful because the guy did plant his feet. It's kind of like the old basketball rule, right? He has the right to his territory. Yes. And Sarantola just tried to run right through him, and you can't do that. And that penalty, again, lack of discipline in this second half for the Brocasian offense. And I, I don't know what else to say right now, Mokan. It's a different team than what we saw in the regular season. You're absolutely right. Some costly penalties that cost them points, yards, and uh, now they're deciding what they will do. Will they go for it? Will they punt it? I don't know what they're going to decide with Norm Weeks at the helm. Again, they went for it last time, and it cost them an INT. So we'll see what they decide now. The referee is explaining to Weeks hit the decision here. I, w I would have to say, don't make the same mistake twice. Learn from your learn your lesson. You got lucky. The defense bailed you out. Punt this ball and let your defense try and turn the tide again. You have Jamie Ojeha patrolling down the s down the the center field. This is a guy who led Division Four in interceptions. He had 16 interceptions, and you got to figure he's going to be a presence before this game is out. So I think you pl let your defense do the job here. He could have broken uh, Patrick Chenard's INT record of 19 from 2006, way back in D2. So they uh, are punting. They are punting. Yes, they are. So they decide to punt the ball, which could be a smart move. You want to play that field position game here, just being down by a score, 25-19 in this football game. And you wonder if they can, if Brocasian can stop that mongoose offense from going into the end zone. And we'll find out on this ensuing drive as Alexander Godet looking to see what is out there. What is the weakness on that defense from Brocasian? Steve Hodhod making the call to all of his guys to make sure they know, they know what to do. On this play, Godet gets snapped the football, waiting, looking to his left, gets it out, caught by Landry Legault, and that will be a short game for three yards. Yeah, a nice little play, nothing uh, spectacular, but on their end, they know that they have enough speed and athleticism that a small catch can build and gain yards. They're, this is a team that is very focused on getting yards after catch rather than a deep play. Very important to do that, absolutely. All right, second down here, Godet gets snapped, looking over the middle. It is caught by Landry Legault again. 21-yard gain, first down, big play. Landry Legault making me look like an idiot. As I just said, that they should focus more on the short pass. They go deep, but that's that's also a good consequence of having that strong short pass game is that people start creeping up, playing closer, and then you get those openings deep on the field. And Landry Legault with another big play. First down now for the Mongoose offense. Brocation seems a little bit flustered by this uh, drive here, not uh, having the right calls here on defense, it seems to me, as Alexander Godet waiting for the snap of the football gets it. Play action fake, throws it, and this will be a big play by Sarantola. A six-yard loss. Chris Rive sacked in the end zone or well, back, in the, a, back in the behind yeah, line of scrimmage. A tackle behind the line of scrimmage, I guess. I don't think you can call it a sack. It was a handoff. He was running. It was a nice play by him. This is a guy who has done quite well as a rusher. He had uh, – he's actually – he's had eight – he plays kind of hybrid. He rushes, plays some defense too when Hot Hot goes to rush. He had eight sacks during the regular season, 13 pass defenses. He's a very good athlete, and it was good on him to kind of continue to follow the right player, made the right decision, makes a big tackle for loss. Big Alec Sarantola for Brocage's defense, and this is a big play for them now coming up. Second down, Godet gets a quick pass over the middle to, Char to Charlebois. Eight yards, tackle by, tackle by Prevost, and that will definitely make this a big play. Well, it looked like they – I think they might have been playing a 2-3 there, Mo, and uh, that, that they had that little empty spot right there in the middle – Neither of the short uh, defensive players was able to get there quick enough. It was a good play, a smart read by Alex Godet, and they gained some yardage, get back what they lost with that tackle for a loss. Uh, here it comes, second down, coming up here for the Mongoose offense. Godet gets a snap, looks, pumps, rolls out to his right. He avoids the rush. He throws a little touch, touchdown. Yes, that is a touchdown. Uh, that looks like Cedric, Cedric Knuckle. Knuckle. Yes. yes. Big play, 31-19 for Mongoose. Well, yeah, he pump faked the cameraman out of his shoes and then throws it up, and Cedric Knuckle, with a good extension, brings down that touchdown in the corner of the end zone. And really, it's become the Knuckle and Lego show so far in this game. These are two guys that have... Knuckle, no surprise there. We expected him to be important, and he has not disappointed in this second half especially. But Lego is a guy who's also been consistent for them, helped get them this close to the end zone. And time is now a factor for Brocage's offense. They're down by two scores, 31-19, uh, pending the extra point here, Darren. They have to start going with that deep ball, something to cut this lead. Well, we'll see at what, as a result of this extra point what happens, but I definitely agree with you, Mokan. All right, extra point attempt. It is incomplete. 31-19 now, and as we move ahead into this next possession for Brocasian, 
you have to wonder what is the psyche of this team not that never been down this late by a big scoreline in this finals. Well, that's it. They do have the experience of being down late against the Gators, but that was manageable for them. They could still get the, goal ba the ball back and score. But in this case, just a very tough situation for them. Weeks gets us now. Looking to his left. Quick pass out to Nicky Maguire. It is caught. It will be a seven-yard gain second down coming up. And you can bet the Mongoose players are going to play a little bit further off their, the off the receivers of Brocation. They don't want to give up the big play, and that's what they got to do now with the two-score lead. They want to protect it, you know, but sometimes that prevent defense, you know what it does, Mokan. Second and three coming up here. Weeks gets a snap of the football. Looking to his right. Quick out, caught by Sarantola, and that should be enough for a first down. Well, this is sometimes the danger you get by playing a little bit further off. Yes, they, you won't give up the big play, but it's very easy to pick up three, four, five yards quick, quick, and as long as you see the brocation huddle, is they're going no huddle. They're going fast, so it might be to their advantage. All right, Norman Weeks waiting for the snap of the football. Gets it, looking to his left, waits, goes over the middle. It is caught. No, incomplete. Yes, incomplete. Intended for Nicky Maguire. That could have been a big touchdown for them. Well, Nicky Maguire got a hand on it, but I don't think he had possession until, yeah, you see, he kind of bobbles it up and he wasn't able to haul it in. I think he wanted to kick the ball there. Uh, good thing he didn't. That would have been a penalty. But he wasn't able to haul it in before he got to the end of the end zone. So Third down. Big play here for Brocation's offense. Weeks gets a snap. Looking to his left. Pumps going to the end zone. It is picked off. Picked off by Landry Legault. A big play once again by number 16. Landry Legault is a guy you do not want to get allowed to get going because this guy can take over games. And you, you see him saying, what do you want me to do? It's three interceptions in this game so far for him. And that should be it, though. I mean, down by two scores with less than a minute left in this football game. This is a disappointing loss for Brocation, if this is the case to be. Brocation, all incomplete by Alexander Godet, and there's a flag on the play, though. Well, yeah, Brocation at this point has to hope for a miracle. They need to play extremely aggressive and try and intercept this ball. But there's the time is definitely a factor, and I don't know if they'll be able to get it done. And, uh, again, uh, the, the unforced errors, the careless penalties, uh, key turnovers uh, created by Mongoose's defense definitely has been the difference in this football game, Darren. Yeah, definitely. Mongoose, they knew what got them there, and they played it smart. They were effective. They matriculated the ball downfield and Brocasian, yet another second-half collapse. I do not know what happened in the second half for them. And this time they can't get out of the hole and win this uh, football game here as Mongoose, Ray Stawar, uh, you know, we make fun of Ray, but this is going to be another title for him. He's up there in a select company of winning spring and winter but wearing the number of tiles he has so far and how sweet it is for this mongoose team they make a couple of key additions in the offseason this is a team that made the spring 2010 finals lost against the patriot now they're going to win this championship and it's very impressive for them the way they did it they were smart and effective throughout like i said you stick to your game plan you use your best players and that's how you win a championship in five games this was the longest of the playoff uh, formats for all five divisions and they did the unthinkable by doing what they had to do uh, Godet waiting, rolling out, throws it. It is caught by Cedric Knuckle once again. 17-yard gain, first down. That should put a nice pretty bow on the end of this football game here, Darren. Yeah, definitely. And uh, from the Brocasian side as well, I mean, we have to give them some credit for the incredible season they did have, Mo. Uh, they were undefeated up to this point. It is the worst feeling in the world to go undefeated and lose in the last game it's it's got to be very tough for them got to wonder what's going to happen with this team if christian sarantola is healthy is he their quarterback will norman weeks be back will nicky mcguire be back you know a lot of questions but we'll see how they do all right as they play out the uh, last few uh plays of this d4 winter final i mean mongoose on the cusp of winning the uh the d4 mantle and uh here goes with that quick run out and that'll be a short gain for maybe one if not two yards on that play well that's it at this point you just do not want to lose you don't want to give the ball up uh go dead being smart here just gain a, gain a few yards protect the ball nothing risky and that's how you got to do it uh just keep the ball away from Brocation, and the championship is yours. They're a few plays away. And the other disappointment you can see in the body expression of the Brocation players on the football field that uh, they were close, but no cigar this time around, and unfortunately cannot uh, come back from this deficit. And no, no points in the second half for the Brocation offense is the most surprising thing. As he gets, as you see, Godet gets sacked, but he doesn't Sarantola, mind. yes. He doesn't mind that either. No, he doesn't mind because at the end of this game, he will be hoisting the D4 Winter Trophy. And uh, uh, congratulations to the uh, Mongoose football team for doing a job well done to get to this point. As, as there is one more play left in this D4 Winter Final, they are up by a 31-19 12-point lead. 
And um, a great first half. Second half kind of fl- uh, fluttered out there where there was not much excitement, though. Well, like I said earlier, both teams didn't show us their best in the first half. But in the second half, as you could see, when Cedric Knuckles started getting going, the Mongoose showed what they were made of and Brocasian completely wilted. So uh, it's it's just sad to see you wanted a good competitive final, but congrats to Mongoose as well. Godet, last play. He throws it up in the air. It is caught for the touchdown by none other than... <laughs> Landry Legault. A huge play to cap it off as the Mongoose football team win the D4 winter title. Congratulations to them, Darren. Really impressive game by them. Very, very impressed. Congratulations to Mongoose. And you look at it now, Brocasian, their undefeated season now over. Brocasian moving ahead here. We see what they will do with their team, as you pointed out before, with their quarterback situation. But Mongoose, though, they have a bright future ahead of them. Definitely, and as you see, whistle dead. They knew that there were no plays left. Very impressive outing for Mongoose. Congratulations to Mongoose on a 37-19 victory. Darren, job well done by you on this broadcast, and looking forward to the postgame show. Stay tuned for that. Congratulations to the D4 Winter Champs, Mongoose. Je suis ici avec Mongoose, les nouvelles uh, champions du, du Division 4. Uh, so, Chris, this is your first time in the championship. Tell us about it. It's incredible, man. It's my first time here, and I'm really, really happy. Can't be proud to play with these guys over here. I'm really, really happy to play these guys, and hopefully we'll do it again next year. Um, Alex, même avec uh, les deux interceptions dans le premier demi, il était 19-19 à, à le demi. Parlez-nous-en du uh, ton motivation pour la deuxième. Bien, on a fait comme l'habitude, nous autres, quand c'est à demi. Peu importe ce qui arrive, peu importe le score, on dit c'est 0-0. C'est une nouvelle game qui commence, c'est ça qu'on a fait. On est parti en feu. Landry a une grosse game énorme. On a aussi comme l'habitude. Mais tout le monde, grosse game, vraiment, on a step up. La défense, la défense je suis vraiment impressionné. C'est vraiment la défense qui a fait gagner le match. Puis deuxième demi, on n'a pas fait d'erreur offensive non plus. C'est ça qu'on a gagné. Ça avait l'air que même quand il y avait des erreurs, vous n'étiez pas fâché, vous étiez vraiment prêt pour euh, continuer et euh, presser. Mm. Puis euh, Wade, parlez-nous-en de la, la saison prochaine puis euh, tout ce que vous allez faire avant ça. Bien, écoute, euh, la seule chose que je peux dire, on va revenir plus fort. On était une équipe. Qui, on a beaucoup de recrues, pas beaucoup de vétérans. On va arriver plus fort. On se rendra peut-être dans le C. Ouais. On va essayer d'aller gagner ça dans le C. C'est ce que j'ai à dire. On aimerait ça. Je, je te remercie. Euh, notre nouvel championnat à euh, Division 4, Mangus. Merci oui. beaucoup. Oui. And welcome back to the Weekly Extra Point Live Roadshow Edition, the D4 Recap. Congratulations to the Mongoose on winning the D4 Winter Title. GM, your thoughts on this victory by Mongoose? I think it was huge. Uh, very few people saw it coming. I didn't see it coming. I didn't think that Mongoose had the depth to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these opponents, not just in the finals, but all the way leading up to this. But Mongoose were confident. They were cohesive as a unit, and they just they persevered. Even in the first half, we saw that it, the score was tied 19-19. Alexandre Godet had thrown two interceptions, and yet he pressed on. He was confident. He didn't let that get in his way. They had a fantastic game, but not only that, you had players like Landry Legault, someone who was never mentioned in the... Uh, throughout the season and yet however he came up in this game huge he had three touchdowns and three interceptions named playoff MVP of the year so I think this was very very important for them looking at Norman Weeks and what he did and we mentioned at the top of the show the experience of Nicky Maguire and Norman Weeks uh, unfortunately they came up short in today's game not only did they come up short it, it looked like they were not motivated they were getting upset more than they were on on the ball they were getting upset at each other. There were a few overthrown passes from Norm to, Norm to Nicky. It looked almost as if Norm was indeed trying to force the ball a little bit too much. And I think that's what came up short for them. Their passes were getting a little bit predictable as well. I, Mongoose as a whole, I, look, this is a team that no one expected to be here. I mean, week one, watched them play in St. Leonard. They didn't look like a team that was ready to win an FPF title. I, as a whole, looking at this from start to finish, I have to say this was a well-played game by Mongoose. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm 100% I'm on that. You know that they have players from, uh, from A squad in the past. They have Cedric Knuckle. They have a couple of um, Ahunsik players as well. But they've come together as a team. They stuck together with the core, and they've built upon that, and they've progressed. So you see that when players are passionate like that, they persevere. They get together during the week. They practice, and they've really come together as a group, whereas Brocasian had almost like a bit of a last-minute mix, which worked out well. But when it came down to crunch time, I, I don't know if they couldn't shake that from each other and they were getting too upset. But Mongoose left it all out on the field. They were prepared. They didn't let it get to them. And they worked very, very hard. Was, was Brocation a flawed team? Did, did Mongoose expose any flaws that they had? I don't think that it was necessarily a flaw. More that there was a little bit too much hype surrounding Brocation. Brocation had 
everything to lose and not much to gain because it was already expected from them as of week two or week three the way they were playing. So I don't think that they were necessarily a flawed team, but it was just a difficult position for them to live up to the hype that everyone had given them, including, including myself. Uh, overall, what grade would you give this final? I'd give this final an A. You know what? I know it's difficult to say, but even though uh, the game was won by three touchdowns, it was 19-19 at the half, and the team that was not expected to win it won it. I mean, that's huge. When, when you see a surprise like that, when it was so close at the half, absolutely, I'd give that a fantastic grade. I'd give the division of 40 teams an A as well. Very well. Uh, the future of both teams, Brocasian and Mongoose, looking ahead, if both teams play in spring and winter, what do you forecast for both teams? Will they move up? Well, Mongoose had just mentioned to me on the field that they are going to be playing C. I think it's very likely that Brocasian will play C as well, having done mediocre in B. So I think both teams are poised to B and C. And winter season, what do you expect from them moving up? I think it's too close to tell for the winter season, but absolutely, uh, you have to move up come, uh, come winter, and it's also that they were so strong to begin with both teams. Very well then. So there you have it. The D4 recap. Congratulations to Mongoose, but first and foremost, a bunch of thank yous. I want to thank you, GM, for your hard work and dedication to not only this division, but to all of the divisions. You're our true MVP for Weekly Extra Point Live I, this I year. really appreciate that. I thank you. It's, it's been my greatest pleasure to really be a bit more known in this league and to convey my passion. So I'm, I'm very happy, and, and I thank you. Uh, we want to thank the visionary, Robert Campana, for his, uh, his uh, confidence in us to do this show uh, every week uh, for the winter season, of course, for spring. So we thank him. We want to thank all the D4 teams that participated in this year's season. It was a fantastic year. Some great games that we saw in D4. So we want to thank them and all of our viewers who tuned into the Weekly Extra Point Live and this roadshow uh, this season. So without further ado, uh, the magic words, please. We thank you for watching us, and we'll see you in spring. Good night, guys. Uh, see you in May 2012 and winter 2013. Watch me not stop, though. Yeah.